The 2005 National Championship game featured six players that would be selected in the first round of the NBA draft just a few months later. For North Carolina, freshman Marvin Williams was the number two overall pick. Raymond Felton went number five overall, Sean May number 13, and Rashad McCants 14. For Illinois, Darren Williams was the third pick of the draft, and Luther Head was 24th. So obviously both teams were super talented, but with contrasting styles of play. In this video, we'll cover the X's and O's of Roy Williams and Bruce Weber, and how both coaches adjusted during the national championship game. We'll also look at why Illinois' offense was ahead of its time, and the UNC player that took over the game. This is part two of our March Madness Rewind series. 2005 Illinois was one of the most requested after part one on Florida Gulf Coast. Comment down below on what you'd like to see in the next one, and please like and subscribe so our channel can continue to grow. Just like every Roy Williams North Carolina team, the 2005 version played fast, averaging 76 possessions per game, which was third in the entire country. Led by point guard Raymond Felton, the Tar Heels looked to push early in the national championship game. In the beginning of the game, they got out into transition against an Illinois team that ranked just 250th in possessions per game. It was that transition offense that led to a 13-point Carolina lead at halftime. When pushing the ball, Carolina ran the same secondary break created by Dean Smith that they still run in 2020. The first option of the break is the rim run, where Sean May was able to beat his man down the floor for two assists from Felton. In any given Carolina season, you're sure to see these rim run baskets, with the lead post player sprinting down the court after both makes or misses. As the trailer, Jawad Williams found May for a bucket off a high-low pass. That's the same trail spot where Luke May was so effective during his time in Chapel Hill. The other secondary break action Carolina scored on during the title game was their ball screen into a back screen. Here you can see examples from the 2019 season where they get the lob. But in 2005, the back screen led to a Rashad McCants 3. If you want to learn more about the secondary break and Roy Williams' freelance motion offense, we have an hour-long video available for purchase on our website, which covers UNC, Duke, Kansas, and Kentucky, how their offenses compare to each other, and how they've changed over the years for different superstar players like Kendall Marshall, Jason Tatum, and Anthony Davis. Use the promo code YouTube to get you 20% off that video. Illinois did have some transition possessions of their own, but they were much more guard-focused. In a lot of ways, the 2005 Illini were similar in style style to the eventual Golden State Warriors years later. Here's a three on one fast break and D Brown kicks out to Luther Head for a three. Not exactly a common sight in basketball back in 2005. On the season, Brown shot 43% from three, Head shot 41% and Darren Williams shot 36%. With those three in the backcourt, Illinois was well ahead of their time in terms of generating three-point attempts. Another similarity between Illinois and the Warriors was using the post to hunt three-point attempts. Here Darren Williams enters the ball into the post and sets a screen at the elbow for Luther Head. This post entry action called split cuts are extremely popular today in both the NCAA and NBA. The Illinois offensive scheme was built on great ball movement and great player movement. They had talented scorers, but they maximized that talent by being unselfish, reversing the ball, and making the extra pass. 
Here's a crucial possession from late in the game. On the Luther head drive, not only does he make the right read by passing to the corner drift, but the ball then gets whipped right back around for a wide open head three. The ability to relocate right back out to the three point line is yet another thing we've seen from the Warriors, specifically Steph Kirk. Immediately to start possessions, the Illinois guards would cut from one wing to the other wing, receiving different screens in the process. It was these long stagger screens that brought Illinois right back into the game in the second half, erasing the halftime deficit. Bruce Weber is now the head coach at Kansas State, and you can see he still runs these long motion screening actions, even without the shooters that he had back in 2005. Kansas State has been below the national average in three-point percentage in each of the last three seasons. Back to the game, another favorite for Illinois was out of the Chin series. The play would start the same with Darren Williams passing and then receiving a back screen. But there were several options from there involving Williams either setting a screen or receiving a screen. This variation, which Illinois ran three separate times in the game, caught Jawad Williams sleeping on the cross screen. Carolina's half-court offense was all about Sean May. The junior had one of the best offensive performances ever in a national championship game, scoring 26 points while missing just one shot from the floor. The first problem for Illinois' defense was allowing deep post position. At 6'9", 265, with great touch around the basket, May was next to unguardable when catching with a foot in the paint. Even on post-ups from further out, Illinois post defenders couldn't get stops against May. His go-to move off the bounce was the spin. May's postgame wasn't a surprise to Illinois. Here's the very first post-up of the game and Illinois doubles immediately on the flight of the pass. But UNC was a very strong shooting team percentage-wise, making it difficult for the defense to consistently double. Illinois chose to mix up their post coverage, sometimes doubling on the flight of the pass, sometimes doubling on the dribble, and sometimes just playing straight up. But none were particularly effective against May, who dominated the second half while Illinois was heating up from three. Another adjustment made by Illinois was to cheat the post. Here you can see Darren Williams is essentially ignoring his man to instead cheat the post entry. On these plays, the Illinois coverage was to then fly switch afterwards. Luther Head is cheating here, so when his man clears out, D. Brown switches and Head stays low. Again, the problem here for Illinois was the Carolina shooting. The Tar Heels were able to skip the ball into the corner for two big threes versus the fly switch. On the other side of the ball, Roy Williams also switched up his defense. UNC went to their point zone defense, another system originally used by Dean Smith. The zone caused a couple turnovers, but Illinois' three-point shooting stretched it to its limits.
Here's the point zone being used in a Carolina NCAA tournament game back in 1992. The Carolina players are all packed into the paint daring Ohio State to shoot. It was a much different era of basketball when the point zone was first conceived. Illinois took a championship record 40 threes in the game. And fortunately for the Tar Heels, those threes were not dropping in the first half. When the threes did start falling for Illinois, Roy Williams changed his zone defense again to a traditional 1-3-1, with Felton aggressively extending out to half court and traps in the corners. Even when Carolina was playing man-to-man, -man, Sean May was essentially a one-man zone. May, or whoever was in the game at the five, would sag into the paint and clog driving lanes, daring James Augustine to shoot jumpers instead. With Augustine winding up in foul trouble for almost the whole game, Jack Ingram became the player being sagged off of, and he delivered with a couple big jump shots. With 5.34 left in the game, D. Brown completed the Illinois comeback, tying the game at 65. On the next play, Raymond Felton came down and hit his biggest shot of the game. Who's on Felton right now? The shutdown man. They're on Williams. Felton, long three. Oh. Minutes later, Luther Head would answer with a big three of his own to tie the game right back up. Stop yet. The other thing, referees are not calling moving screens, so you might as well keep on doing it. Over. In the final two minutes, Illinois stuck right with their motion offense. Their off-ball screening generated open three-point shots for their star players. But those shots just didn't fall. The Illini went completely scoreless in the last two minutes. And after this well-executed elevator play led to another miss, North Carolina won their fourth national championship. Take it and that is it. There is a new dean in college basketball. North Carolina takes the title. Thank you for watching. Remember to leave a comment if there's a tourney game you'd like to see next and sign up for our newsletter to get college basketball analysis right to your email.